terms on here. What kind of questions do y'all have from any of the terms? And these are going to be from chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and from ideology. There is nothing from chapter 5. What questions? Go ahead. Uh, chapter 1, who was dealing with? Who? Who? Do y'all remember what who was dealing with? Okay, what, who in chapter 2? Go ahead. Chapter 1. Right, but it, we really did cover it in chapter 2, but I got you. Who, who was the who? Yeah, go ahead. Who wrote the Constitution? Who wrote the actually was it who wrote the Constitution? Who wrote the Declaration? It was dealing with the who's that dealt with the Declaration of Independence. And I had asked you three questions: Who wrote it? Who was it written about? And who was it written for? And you've answered the first one: Who wrote it? It was Jefferson that wrote it. No ifs, ands, or buts. Jefferson is considered the father of the Declaration of Independence. So he's considered the person that wrote it. Who was it written about? Go ahead. It was written about the king. And if you remember, when you go back and you look at the chapter for those pages, um, who was it written about? And they always started those sentences on the second page of the declaration in the text. He, he endeavored to prevent. He obstructed. He, you know, all of these negative verbs on there. So Jefferson wrote it. It was written about the king. Who was it written for? Go ahead. It was written for France or ultimately potential allies. Potential allies. And France was the one that took the, the, the bait on this. What was the purpose behind the Declaration of Independence? Yeah. Legal justification for independence from Great Britain. And you're right, it, it was a declaration, but it was a legal justification. So they weren't just saying bad things about the king, but they appealed to logic and reason. And if you remember that piece that I had read to you about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness or property, if you remember that piece that I had mentioned to you about if your government is not protecting your rights or if it is actively threatening them, then the people have the right to overthrow their government and then ultimately to reestablish a new government that will best protect them. All of these could be pieces of that answer. So this might actually be a pretty good short answer for some of you, just something to think about. But the who's behind the declaration, the what, but make sure you give me some information about the declaration itself life, liberty, and property, and things like the, the, the piece about being able to overthrow your government. What other questions have you got from up here? I removed 111 from everybody. That is removed from everybody. I removed politics, politicians, and political science from everybody as well. Do you have any others up there from chapter one? What were presidential elections? Sophie's smiling. She's like, don't call on me. You remember I put those three presidential elections up on the board basically like the first or second day of class? What were those presidential elections talking about? It was Bush and, 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 and oh. Gore. Go ahead, Dustin. That's when they couldn't get a majority of the Okay, a because of the upset. you're really, really close on this. Now, Bush didn't get a majority of the popular vote against Gore. Gore got more votes. But I also had those two Clinton elections up there. Go ahead, Sean. Now, wasn't it like the state of Florida, I guess, like they, they had, like part of the state of Florida had more time to vote, and I guess that was a more conservative area. You're right. You're focusing on 2000, but I put up 1992, 1996, and 2000. And what was the same, what was the theme of all three of those elections? More of the American voters... Didn't vote. What's that? Didn't vote. Didn't vote. I didn't what see did who know? said it. What's, oh, it's not that they didn't vote. More people voted against the man that became president than actually voted for him. So when you said popular vote before... Bush technically did not get the popular vote. Clinton won the popular vote, but a majority of the American people voted against him in both of his elections. Didn't he only have like 42 percent? He had 43 one time and 49 one time. Yes. Yeah, a majority of the American people voted against the man that became president in 1992, 1996, and 2000. And I'll, I'll post the video, too, so you'll, you'll have access to this. What other questions have y'all got from one? Got to go. Got to go. We only have room for now.
direct uh, democracy? What was direct democracy? Go ahead, Sophie. That um, when it directly applies to people, to people, the citizens like help runs or like help with the politics. That's citizens are going to help with the politics. How's that different from what we have now, though? Okay, go ahead. Well, we have we have representative government, so we actually elect elect officials for them to take decisions right. to the government. Right. Right. With direct government, with direct government, we don't have really a say in their in that election process. Yes. In that sense. Go ahead, Ian. In direct democracy, the average citizen that is voter has more political power than uh, representative government. They do, and and the idea behind direct democracy is instead of voting for people, and you started perfect, Ben. We have a representative democracy. We vote for people, and the people make the decisions for us. In theory, that's what they do. Well, in a direct democracy, we're not voting for politicians, but the average citizen is voting directly on all of the issues that face the country. And I don't know, bless you, if you're going to remember this, but I had asked the different cl the different classes, what do you know about school lunches? What do you know about road construction? What do you know about hog farming? And, and at different points, y'all knew a little bit about some of these things, but nobody really seemed to know anything about hog farming. And direct democracy is the idea that people would be voting on things that in fact they didn't know anything about. And, and that could be dangerous. It also kind of ties in with initiative, referendum, and recall. And I don't have referendum up there, but I have initiative and recall. In the US, we do not have a direct democracy in that everybody votes on everything but we have examples of direct democracy. Can y'all explain to me what a recall or what an initiative is? Go ahead, Zoe. Um, recall is when, um, like you as the citizens, can take an elected official out of office if they're negative. Yeah, you can. You can actually remove an elected office. It's just like if you, you get a car and a car has a recall, the company calls it back and they try and fix it. Well, with a recall election, you're trying to call back a broken politician. Now, there's two questions. Actually, how does it start? How does a recall process start? Why would this be direct democracy? Anybody? Go ahead, Salvador. Basically, same thing as initiative. You have to go around and get a certain amount of votes. You, is it votes? I mean, signatures. You've got to collect a percentage of signatures of registered voters. And what are they signing on? Uh, to, remove the to remove the person from office. And this is not a federal thing. This is typically state or local, and it's not even in all of the states. It's only in some of them. Now, with this being said, so you collect these signatures, you turn it into the Board of Elections, they verify that all of these people are valid registered voters, and then if you get that percentage, they have a special election. What are the two questions that are on that uh, ballot? Do you want the person recalled or removed from office? If you check no, I don't want them recalled or removed, then what happens? You're done. You want them to stay. And if you check yes, in fact, that you want them recalled put, or removed, then what do you got to do? Put someone's name that you want to replace that person. You're going to have to pick somebody. And what was the state that we talked about? California. California. And what was the problem with that recall election? Do you remember what we were talking about? Go ahead. And like so many people in there to choose from. Oh, yeah. Anybody, yeah. anybody yeah. could yeah. run. What kind of people? Oh, like yeah. Sean yells out porn star. Yeah, you know Sean. Yeah, there were porn stars on there. There were exotic dancers on there. There was a sumo wrestler on there. The governor was on there. Gary Coleman was on there. And, and you know, you can go back and, and you can look at that, but, but there were a lot of random people. And I, I remember asking the classes, do you want this kind of a person representing you? And sometimes people would say, no, I don't want a porn star representing me. Sean didn't give that answer, but, but, but other people in the room did. And the reason that I mention this to you is direct democracy is all of the people deciding. It doesn't matter how educated or uneducated or how successful or how questionable your career is. It's just the idea that the people decide. Do y'all remember what an initiative was? You collect the signatures. So you said before, the recall is like an initiative. If you want a bill passed, where do you go? To the state government, to the legislature, right? Well, in an initiative, you're not going to the state government. What are you doing to get a bill passed? Yeah, you're collecting the signs. Stop signs, yield signs, signatures. Sign collecting the signatures, yes. Collecting the signatures of registered voters, and what are they signing? 
They're signing a proposed bill. So a regular citizen writes a bill proposal. A regular citizen goes around and collects the signatures, and they submit it to the Board of Elections. When they validate that these signatures are from registered voters, then in fact they will put this on the ballot, and it is yes or no. If it passes, what happens? It goes to the Congress. It goes to the Congress, she yells out. Go ahead, Dustin. It becomes law. Doesn't matter if the legislature wants it or doesn't want it. Doesn't matter if the governor wants it or doesn't want it. It's the idea that the individuals write it, they collect the signatures, they vote on it, and if they pass it, it becomes law. The courts could eventually strike it down, but the individuals are doing it all on their own. And if, of course, you vote no, then the individuals have, have killed it. Um, freedom, order, and equality up here are pretty straightforward kinds of things, and we talked about those, freedom, the idea to do what you want to do, and I think I had mentioned to you, you need to have order sometimes, otherwise too much freedom could in fact mean that nobody has any. Order is about protection, order is about safety, equality is about equal treatment. Keep in mind those general thoughts, because there might be a question or two about examples of freedom or examples of order or examples of equality on an exam. And I think if you know that freedom is about doing what you want to do, whether it's social, employment, education, marriage, guns, religion, you know, political freedoms, order is about safety and security, and equality is about equal treatment, I think that that's probably enough. That won't be a big part of it. What do you have about chapter two? The who and the Declaration of Independence really overlap between chapter one and chapter two. Go ahead, Toby. When you say amended fractions, do you mean like what it takes? All right, let's go ahead and address these. What are the fractions that we've talked about? Because we've talked about a decent chunk of fractions. Three-fifths. Okay, what's three-fifths? Anybody? Three-fifths of a person. Yeah. Voting. And two-thirds. They were equal to three. Five slaves equals three people, or a slave counts as three-fifths of a person for what? It wasn't vote, but it was for? Taxes. For, for, for taxes or Texas? Taxes. Taxes, taxes yes. For tax purposes. The other part of it was? Electoral college? Representation, that's what you're talking about. So the three-fifths compromise was, for population purposes, a slave will count as three-fifths of a person or five slaves equals three people. And the northern states wanted the slaves to count more for taxation because they wanted the southern states to pay more taxes. The southern states wanted the slaves to count more for population purposes so that they would get more representation in Congress. And if you really, there was a quote, uh, page 20-something from what I remember, and it lays it out. What's that, James? Oh, I thought you were giving me the page number. And the idea was, was that the northern states wanted the slaves to count as a whole person for taxes so the, slaves would, the southern states would pay more. The southern states wanted slaves to count for, as one whole person for population so they'd get more votes. And the compromise was they'll count for three-fifths for both because uh, nobody was going to get everything that they wanted out of this. What, what other questions? Or what other fractions? Three-fifths. Two What's two-thirds? Because there's two for two-thirds. What about the votes for the House of Representatives? You need a two-thirds vote to pass a law. Yeah, yeah don't write that down. Yeah, that's not it. Don't write the Everybody's like, whoa, what, what's Sean doing? <laughs> Stick to porn, Sean. Uh, what, what was two-thirds again? Go ahead. Two-thirds majority to create a bill. Is it create a, a special kind of bill? Bless you. For what? You need a two-thirds vote from the House and the Senate in order to propose a constitutional amendment, which actually goes back to Sophie's original question about amendment fractions. Two-thirds vote. What's the other two-thirds that deals with Congress? Two-thirds vote of the House and the Senate in order to override a veto. Exactly. So there's two-thirds, there's three-fifths. What's three-fourths? Uh, ratification, approval by the state. You need three-quarters of the states to ratify or approve a constitutional amendment. So you would need 36, 37, 38 states in order to get that three-quarters. Go ahead. Three-quarters vote uh, of, you need three-quarters of the states to ratify a constitutional amendment. 
So you need 38 states to agree. 